Hello, welcome back. This is Chem Follower uh, Kinematics Simulation using Katia. Uh, so we're going to make a very simple assembly first. Then we will add a uh, uh, very special joint in the kinematics in Katia, uh, which is a point surface joint. Uh, but before we make that uh, joint, one thing you have to be careful is this uh, part body need to be transferred into the single body. As you can see, it, there's a, a full segment. You can see it. Well, in your life, in real life, uh, if we look at the part made in this way, because those two surfaces, they are tangent, so you're not going to be able to do smooth edges. That's what Katia calls. So if you change the rendering method, the shading method as a uh, shading uh, without smooth edges, you're not going to be able to see it. But if you turn in with a smooth edge, you can see those separated uh, the segment of the part. So when you try to make this uh, point surface joint, it is not going through it because it is not recognized as a single space, uh, surface, so it's not going to be able to make it. So before you do anything, the very first thing you have to do is make this one as a single surface. So in assembly or part design workbench, we cannot do that. So we're going to use this very special workbench, which is under um, the shape groups and there is a generative shape design known as a GSD workbench. Alright. So let me make it big. Under the GSD if you uh, extended the, the boundary functions then next second one is extract function. So we're going to use this extract function to connect this segment as a single surface. So extract then again if you're using the uh, propagation type as a tangent continuity because we already have this as a quick the tangent automatically will follow through and we'll be able to extract it as one but if you uh, segment is not tangent uh, you may have to choose a different method to follow through and making connection uh, this multiple segment as a one single surface. So once, as soon as you choose one segment, then you will go through it. it the Katia will exam through it and as you can see the cam surface will be uh, uh, will turn into uh, the single surface. You say OK. Then you can see the different color be mapped and show as extract. So we're going to utilize this one to make a point surface joint. Now I put it back. So we're going to start the assemble. So we're going to put the base and we're going to put cam. We just made a surface and also we're going to put pin. Then in the assembly I uh, will fix the base first. Then using many play function, let me pull out uh, some part uh, so that you can see better. There we go. So as we expected, uh, we'll have uh, this cam rotate in this axis. So we will have a regular joint, and we will have uh, this pin making up and down prismatic joint. Then as you can see, uh, at the end of the tip of our pin, intentionally I put the reference point. Uh, has a two the benefit having the reference point you can use this point to make a, a actual point surface joint also you can this a point as for the your sensor position too so that you can actually track the z direction in this case uh, how quickly it goes up and down then what kind of acceleration you're getting so you are you can actually uh, test it your performance of your cam. Right, so start with your coins then. There we 
go and this surface to this surface. So they're gonna opposite because they're gonna beat each other. And then axis to axis. I think that should be enough. So if you update it right away, you can see it. Well, of course, we don't have any relationship yet, so we intentionally pull up. Manipulated uh, in the G direction with respect to constraint. Then I will pull up the pin. Then, if you look at from the this direction, I will rotate uh, the cam a little bit intentionally based on y axis. Slightly rotate it. That will be easy to actually make a contact uh, later on. Alright, then we're gonna again make another coincidence at the end of again the pin to the surface we already made it. So again the extract we made and the point we have at the pin. So you can select it here, or if you're having a hard time to pick up, you can just say point will be coincident with the one of a segment there. So for assembly wise, we'll, we'll make it this way first, so that there can be a line in position before we jump into the kinematics. So update, and you can see it, it's perfectly landed up there. So be careful not to move any part from now on, then you can switch to kinematics. Now let's switch to kinematics workbench. And then the digital mockup and this kinematics. All right. So start with a very simple one. Oh well, let's start start with the fixing. So we're gonna start uh, create a new mechanism and we're gonna fix the base. Again, we're going to make a revolute joint for the cam and base, and we're going to make a prismatic joint between pin and base. Then later, we're going to create a point surface joint. Start with the revolute joint, move around this axis, and hide, and this axis. Interestingly, as you can see, when I hide my part, the surface is still there and then plane hidden place and I'm going to choose this one and in base the actual contact surface there you go I'm going to bring it back then just like we did I'm gonna make a pre before uh, we're gonna make a prismatic joint for the pin. So prismatic axis of a pin, axis of a hole, and now we are going to make a one of a parallel plane to the this axis to line of each other. So let me bring it back. So here. Uh, I believe it's going to be YG plane of a pin. Then I'm going to line up with YG plane of a base. Okay. So they are you know, plane wise, they are lined it up perfectly. So as you can see, level of joint and created between cam and base. Prismatic joint between pin and base. The last, most importantly, as you can see right now, it's a two degree of freedom, free to rotate, free to move up back and forth. So there will be a link between those two by this point surface. Point surface is right there. Point surface joint. Okay, is asking you to pick up surface. Again, be careful, pick up the actual surface we extracted it. Not accidentally part the surface, which is not going to work. So make sure you extract the surface. You can see everything is 
selected, the point will be again uh, under the pin, there's a point you made it. Now, see what happened to your degree of freedom. Let's say OK. And again, as soon as the point surface has been created, DOF is 1. So our uh, driving mechanism will be this revolute joint. We're going to rotate it and we're going to see how this follower is actually moving. So we're going to take the angle driven. So 0 to 360. We're going to make a perfect one rotations. And then we'll see how this uh, the pin behave based on that. So that will be our command. Okay. Now, mechanic can be simulated. So, so far we didn't have a law or any sensor yet. So we'll just simulate it based on the command we got. So simulation, mechanism 1. Then if you're making 0 degree 2 as you slide it, make a perfect 360 degree rotation. And you can see it, the cam is uh, react based on the radius changes of a cam. So if I insert then, then if you kind of uh, make a continuous group, then you can see it's a behave. Looks good to me. So now what you gotta do is adding the law. So adding law based on this mechanism. Let's say I want to rotate this one as 10 RPM as an example. So 10 multiplied by 360 degree per one minute. Right? So that make a perfect 10 RPM and multiply by my time in kinematics. So that the unit can be homogeneous. Okay, we got the speed. Then we can add sensor. Of course, it will be end of our pin. You can pick it up. If it is hard, giving me a hard time, just you can pick up right there. So reference will be of course the fixed the uh, part which is base and point over selection. So we'll do point and the point of your pin. Then um, you can rely on the base or you can create your own and you can kind of follow through as well too. So I'm going to just use main axis of a base in this time. Okay. So now since we have a law is ready, you can simulate with the law. And time base wise, since it's a 10 RPM, well, if we rotate uh, 60, uh, 60 seconds divided by 10, then actually you can get the actual time you needed for the uh, one rotation. So they make 6 seconds, right? Um, 10 RPM and six, 60 seconds. So if we simulate it only in 6 seconds, that will make a perfect one rotation. Let's see. There you go. That was perfect one rotation. So now, if you activate the sensors, Again, what we are trying to track is displacement, how much it is going up and down, up and down. So it's going to be Z point, then we're going to find the Z linear speed, and also we're going to see how it's behave in, in terms of accelerations. So three values. Again, clean out if you run. You're getting about 300 data point in each uh, parameter we are looking for, which is Z location, Z speed, and Z acceleration. It's done. So if we take a take a look at the graphics, then again, um, 
z, the y, the red is showing you the, your exhalations. Very strange behavior you can see here. And the green is a speed. And the yellow, you are looking at uh, displacement. So again, sometimes it happens uh, depending on the smoothness of the geometry you have or, or uh, depending on how many number of steps you are tracking it, if it was a smooth enough, it, you will get the very smooth curve or sometimes uh, some strange point happened. Then you can, by playing these numbers, you can get very smooth uh, traction as well too. All right, that will be all for the today's tutorial.